Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are around the world. This is Pastor John coming to you from uh, the campus in El Dorado Hills, and uh, it is a delight to be able to be with you. Uh, this morning, I want to uh, just take the opportunity to uh, uh, speak uh, into your life and uh, give you uh, some food that will be uh, nourishing to your heart, to your soul, to your mind, to give you strength wherever you are uh, in this uh, wonderful world. I pray that God is uh, just filling your heart so that you might be able to spill out uh, to uh, those around you. Uh, once again, my name is Pastor John and uh, enjoy being with you on this uh, great um, morning, afternoon and evening, wherever you are around the world. Today, I just wanna take a moment to pray and then we're gonna get into the Word of God and uh, just digest some things that God has placed upon my heart uh, for this uh, season that we're in. So let's go ahead and pray. Father God, I thank you for every uh, SUM student. I pray, uh, I pray for every, Lord, uh, faculty member, for every staff member, for every pastor, evangelist, uh, missionary, Lord, apostle, Lord God, a teacher, uh, whoever, Lord God, has uh, come into this uh, session. I just pray, Lord God, today that you would just uh, enable, me, enable me, Lord God, to be able to uh, uh, communicate your word. For Lord God, your word is living. It's the uh, greatest language, Lord God, that has ever been given to mankind. And I just thank you that uh, you've allowed me, Lord God, to uh, just break some bread with uh, your people. Uh, bless, Lord God, this time in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, um, it's a joy to be with you uh, this morning. Again, uh, one of the uh, uh, things that uh, has been pressing upon my heart in this season, in this hour that we're living in, is the fact that uh, people are, are, are calling um, upon God and that people are thirsty and people are hungry and people are, are also starving and famished. And so it's with that thought, I, I uh, was given this uh, message that the Lord dropped into my heart and it, it's concerning being strong in the hour that we are uh, living in. And um, my title message is Great Day of Feasting and of drinking. It's a great day of feasting and drinking. And so, you know, in this hour that we're living in, people are looking for stability. People are looking for um, <clears throat> The, the compass, the moral compass that is uh, going to guide and um, bring their life uh, to that place of, of safety and uh, a place of security. And uh, all around us, we have um, people that are being driven by uh, so many uh, different um, <clears throat> emotions and so many different thoughts and, and so many different um, behaviors. And so I want to address the being strong today in the hour uh, that we are, that we are living in. Um, I was reading something a couple weeks ago that uh, just stirred my heart along this pathway and uh, I heard a pastor speak these words. And so I'm going to um, give that to you. I, I'm not sure it was it was in a clip that I was uh, reading. And so it did not have the pastor's name. But uh, here's here's what the gist of it is to be strong in this hour is going to take more than just a few verses given to us on a once a week basis. You're going to have to re, uh, interact with God himself and with his word. You see, God wants us to have his word and his heart interwoven with how we think and how we feel and how we react, how we respond and, and how we plan. There is an interwovenness of, of God's uh, thoughts and his feelings and his plans and his heart's desires that is interwoven with our heart and with the plans that we're dreaming of and the things that we're feeling, the things that we're thinking. And, and if you and I are going to be strong in the culture that we're living in, it's going to take more uh, than just uh, uh, digesting a study. It's going to be digesting the, the, the food that Christ himself gives to us. And so everything is going to be interwoven in the time that we're living in. And, and uh, 
I'm very big on um, thinking through and, and pondering and meditating upon the, 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 the things of God, especially uh, in this day and age of anxiety, in this day and age of fear, in this day and age where people are, are um, overwhelmed and overloaded. You see, we have an answer that God has given to us as the body of Christ, and, and that is to be able to meditate upon the good things of God, to be able to meditate upon the things that are going to nourish our mind and nourish our heart and nourish our emotions. I'm a firm believer that when, when we take time to invest in the, the meditation of our heart and the meditation of our mind, uh, that God is going to bring forth fruitfulness that is going to give us strength in the day and the, uh, day and the age that we're living in. I'm sure that you're very aware as we hear across the news and as we hear uh, in the culture that we're living in concerning the mental health issues and the, the capacities of, of, you know, people's lives being driven by anxieties and fears. And, and with that, I, I just want to say to you that we can overcome those things through the Word of God, which is living, uh, living words that are strength for our mind and strength for our emotions. So the psalmist says in Psalm chapter 63, 1 through 7, my soul thirsts. It says this, God, you are my God. I shall be wanting or watching for you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and an exhausted land where there is no water. So I have seen you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your favor is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live, and I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied as with fat and fatness, and my mouth offers praises with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, I meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I will sing. I want to submit to you today that God wants to give you a song to sing. God wants to give you a song that comes up from the innermost parts of your heart and mind to be able to praise Him even in the most difficult uh, uh, of seasons. You see, God has given us the ability to overcome every obstacle of life. I have found in my personal journey when I have meditated upon the wrong things or I've pondered the wrong things or I've seen the problem as being bigger than the God that I serve or the God who lives on the inside of me, I have found myself in moments of discouragement. I have found myself in moments of, 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 of even uh, uh, hopelessness in a sense of, is this hopeful or is there a sense of hope in this situation? And, and I have to say to you that It is because of the meditation of my heart or where my thoughts were, it's where my actions began to manifest. I want to say to you today on the same, on the other side of that, uh, that when we begin to deposit the seeds that are divine seeds from God in our life and in our mind, God will begin to take that which was on a downward spiral and bring it back up into an upward spiral. Spiral. You see, we all face different seasons of life. We face difficulties in life. We face situations that can be seeming to be overwhelming, and sometimes they seem to pile up on on, on one another. And I don't know if you've ever been on that journey, but I want to encourage you today that if you've been on that journey or if you're even in that journey, that as the psalmist says here, that he says, my, my soul thirsts for you. There's a yearning. You see, there is a yearning in the soul for life. There's a yearning in the soul in a dry and exhausted land uh, uh, that sometimes we're living in that is, is crying out from the depths of our heart. God, I want to see your heartbeat. I want to see your desires. I want to see your glory. I want to see your power. You see, the psalmist goes on to say here, he says, your favor is better than life. 
Your favor is better than life. There is nothing like knowing that we're walking in the favor of God. And that favor does not have to necessarily be just when things are going good. The favor of God is a focal point. The favor of God is a, is, is a, is, is a perspective. The favor of God is, is an upward uh, calling in our lives uh, to look up and see from God's design, from God's plan, from God's uh, 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 way of seeing the situation. The psalmist says here, your favor is better than life. And sometimes I've wondered that we have created a culture around us that we look at life from the perspective of, of the here and now instead of from the, 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 the perspective of God. We're, we're, we're in a culture that is so consumed with the here and now. And obviously we're living in the here and now, but we've got to understand and be reminded that we're living in the here and now with God, Emmanuel, God with us. It was his plan to place us on, on this planet. It was his plan to place us on this earth and in the time and season that we're living in. And he has full confidence that we can overcome the culture just like our family, our historical family, our historical Christian family has done throughout the ages. God gives you and I the same spirit that he gave Paul and he gave to Peter and he gave to the apostles. The same spirit lives inside of us. It says, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. The psalmist here is dealing with the attitude of, the, of his heart, the attitude that is going on on the inside of him. He says, I will lift up my hands in your name knowing that he was focused on the character of God, the nature of God, the, the, the very essence of God, that is what filled uh, the, the psalmist's soul. My soul is satisfied. Um, my soul is satisfied. Friend, if there's ever a day and age that we're living in that there needs to be a satisfied soul, it is today. All around us, we are looking at people that are are uh, hungry. They are starving. They are thirsting uh, in their soul for things that uh, uh, will fulfill them and bring them satisfaction and, and fulfillment. It hasn't changed over the course of history. You see, our soul does thirst. Our soul does hunger. Our desires for deeper um, satisfaction are placed there by God himself. And I love what the psalmist says here. He says, with my mouth, I will offer praises with joyful lips. Well, how could he say praises with joyful lips? And I believe that the psalmist studied the heart of God. I believe that the psalmist studied the nature of God. I believe that the psalmist reflected upon who God was and is and forever will be in his thoughts, in his heart's pondering, and in his emotions. I believe that the psalmist was one who was filled with, with desire to keep on gazing upon the goodness of God even when situations were difficult. He says, I remember on my bed, how many times have you fallen asleep thinking about the goodness of God? the provisions of God, the miracles of God in your life. How many times have you allowed those things to be meditated upon over the trials or the worries or the difficult things? I am thankful that growing up and being mentored by the man of God that I was mentored from, um, I'm, I'm so grateful that he taught my heart to praise. 
And I have to tell you that there was difficult seasons where I, I let go of some of the principles that, that were very foundational, very foundational to walking through and overcoming and understanding the overcoming life. And I believe this with all my heart, that when we are, our eyes are fixed on praising God and, and developing an attitude of praise and meditate upon, upon God, what He did throughout the day, what He did throughout the moments of that day, what He did and His nature, you see, then our heart becomes an overflow rather than an empty flow. He says, I meditate upon you in the night watches. There was a hunger in the psalmist, and and I believe it was a God-designed hunger for the hour, just like we're living in. I believe that God makes His people hungry and thirsty. I believe with all my heart that what the, what the Word of God tells us is that the soul, my soul, cries out for Him. Why? God put it there. God put the cry within our heart for Him. The void, the emptiness that's often found in, in situations or, or in people's lives comes as a result of not understanding that we are called to be full and not full of the problem, but full of Him and full of the opportunities that can come as a result of fellowshipping with Him. I want to turn our attention to a feast found over in John, speaking of this great day of feasting and drinking. And the Word of God tells us over in John chapter 7. So let's go ahead and take a moment to go over to John chapter 7. And I'm going to begin uh, with verse uh, 37 and verse 38. It says, Now on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty... Let him come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. From his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. He who believes... He who believes what? In the scriptures. And we all know um, through our study of the, of the scriptures that the scriptures all point to, uh, back to, to Christ and back and Christ pointing to the Father. We know that it very, the, the scriptures is all about a revelation of, of Jesus Christ revealing the Father to humanity. You know, that is the excitement of, of the scriptures. It is wonderful to do studies, friend. It's wonderful to be able to, to, to go through and find new information. But the greatest thing that we can do for ourselves in the inner man and in our thought life and in our, in, in, in our um, emotional life is to be able to meditate upon who Jesus Christ is, was, is, and always will be in reflecting the Father's heart. You see, when we meditate upon Him and we gaze upon Him, there's an inner strength that comes into our life. There's, there's a inner, um, there's an inner presence that comes into our life. And, and I'm, I'm just submitting this to you as you think about this today. Jesus said this in, in the scriptures. Now, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone is thirsty. Now, I'm not going to take this into a, a theological time frame of where we are in, in the world's history and in the, in, in the coming of Christ and, and the revelation of Christ. I'm not going to go down that road today. But what I am going to say is this to you, that you and I are living in a day where people are thirsty and people are hungry. And the Word of God tells us that in on the last day, the great day of the feast. Now, I understand it has significant time and a place happening in this for these people, but there's a significant principle that has not changed. People are hungry, people are thirsting, and we are living in a day where people are feasting. The question is, what are they feasting on? What are they feasting on? You see, as believers, as, 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 as believers in Christ, we understand that our heart is, is in the, in, is a, in a 
a quest, is in a desire, is pointed in towards a desire for Christ. We understand that that is where man will find his fulfillment. And I want to share this with you today, that as you begin to make Jesus the one that you're feasting upon, God will take you out of a spiraling downward, a downward spiral and bring you into an upward spiral in him. You see, as you and I feast upon the nature of Christ and we meditate upon the nature of Christ, uh, literally he begins to transform us from the inside out. We are living in a day where people are feasting and thirsting. And the question we have to ask is, what are they feasting on? And oftentimes we can tell what they're feasting on by their behavior, by their attitude by the way that they conduct their life. I've had the privilege of moving into marketplace ministry and being surrounded by people that are hungry and thirsty. And what I have discovered in my journey is that when I present the gospel to them and I present the nature of God to them, there begins to become an openness and an understanding of why they are here, what their purpose is, and where their fulfillment will ultimately come from. I have found a thirsty people. I have found a people that are looking to feast upon something that is not going to result in emptiness. Jesus goes on to say in verse 28 and verse 29, he says this, Then Jesus cried out in the temple, teaching and saying, You both know me, you both know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true. Whom you do not know, I do not know, I do know him, because I am from him, and he has sent me. I want you to hear this as, 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 as Bible college students and as people who are, are, are not just students but uh, followers of Christ. I want you to hear what the Word of God says here to us. He says, in this moment, he turns around and he says, I do know him. I do know him. I am from him. And he has sent me. There's an intimate relationship that is going on that Jesus is speaking about and he points to this this audience here and he says to them you don't know, you don't know where I'm from he says you don't know uh, who uh, where I've come from you don't know me he says but I want you to know something I know who I am I know where I come from and I know who sent me You see part of the cultural hour that we're living in, cultural crisis that we're living in, is about identity. Who am I? Why am I here? What am I doing? There's no different. There was no difference is when Satan attempted Jesus with the same exact identity issue when, when he tried to get Jesus to bow and worship him. It's, it's, it's an identity issue that Satan always is going after. And, and friend, I'm going to tell you, if you and I would sit down at the feet of Jesus and drink from his heart and allow his heart to, to fill our heart, allow his heartbeat and his mind to fill our mind, we will find ourselves moving upward instead of down. Downward. It is, it is a part of having the renewed mind in Christ. I'm so grateful for this scripture when it says this, uh, I do not know, I do not know him because I, 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 I'm sorry, I do know him because I am from him. I do know him because I am from him. It's the divine connection, friend. When you and I have a divine connection, on a daily basis. Remember I began to say in the beginning, we can't do, live on two scriptures. We must feed upon him daily. We must feed upon his heartbeat daily. We must teach people that are in the body of Christ to do the same exact thing, not just to see the the scriptures as a concept, but as a living word from the mouth of God that feeds our soul and feeds our mind and and renews our mind and renews our emotions. It's, It's when we feed upon his life, friend, that life flows from us. And Jesus understood that. He said, 
I am from Him. I want to say that to you today. Say that to myself today. We are from Him. We find our identity from Him. We find our strength in Him. We find our our abilities in Him. As we live in Him, He sends us. He sends us. Don't become dry and try to go out and be sent without feasting on Him, without thirsting in your heart for Him. I promise to you that when you thirst for Him, He will flow from you. When you thirst for His heart, He will flow from you. It will become an interwoven part of who you are and your mindsets and, 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 your, and your emotions. They will all come into alignment when you feed your heart on Christ and who He is. In the last five minutes that I have with you today, I just want to show you a little bit about the thirsty people, the audience that that as I looked through chapter 7, I I saw some things that really grabbed my attention concerning the audience that is is thirsty. First of all, in verse 3, it says, His brother said to him, Move on from here and go to Judea, so that your disciples also may see your works, which you are doing. His brothers were encouraging him to go see his disciples. His brothers were those, if you look at verse 5, that didn't even believe. Verse 5 says this, For not even his brothers believed him. I want to tell you, there is an unbelieving, I want to start out with this, this audience first, the thirsty. There's the unbelieving that is thirsty in their soul. We are called to look for those that are unbelieving and feed their soul and feed their mind, and feed their heart, and feed their emotions, because we have an overflow. The audience of the day that we're living is, is, is no different. There's the unbelieving. Then there's the, those that are public seekers. Verse, verse 4 says this, For no one does anything in secret when he himself is striving to be publicly known. There's, a, there's, there's something that leaped off the pages to me as I was just going through this and, and looking at the principles uh, and the truths that are hidden inside of the scriptures here concerning the, the, the hour of, of feast and the concerning the hour of thirsting. You see, there was a bunch of folks that looked at life from a public perspective. They were, I call them the public seekers. They were looking for publicity from the public. But I want to say something to you today. Jesus knew who he was. And the secret place with his father is where he found strength. Before he went into the public, he had time with his father. As a believer, as a Christian, we can be drawn to the public without having a private. I want to tell you, you will become empty and I will become empty when we're not feeding our soul on the living truth of God. It's alive in our heart. So there was the public seeker in verse 4. And he, verse 4 goes on to say, if you are doing these things, then go show yourself to the world. There's something about the human heart that craves significance. Why? Because God put it there. But I want you to know something. Seeking public acknowledgement without private filling will always leave you empty. It is the private place that God puts in our heart, the secret place, so that we can become an overflow to those around us. And I promise you this, that when we do it God's way, just like Jesus had to do, there will be an overflow and our, 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 our desires, the craving to, to be significant will be fulfilled in the secret place so that when we go into the public place, there, there we just become an overflow. They don't become our source. 
There are those that are fearful. The word of God says in verse 13, it says, However, no one was speaking openly about Jesus or him for fear of the Jews. How many, how many fearful people do we have? How many fearful believers do we have in the culture that we are living in today? And, and I want to say this to you today. People are fearful. There is the fearful heart that needs to come into overflow. The Jews, right? They wouldn't speak um, about Jesus for the fear of the Jews. Friend, I want you to know something. Fear will always cause us to be crippled, emotionally, mentally, physically. God calls us to have a love-filled heart that overflows into the fearful so that they can experience the goodness of God. And then in verse 15, there's the curious. The Jews then were astonished, saying, How has this man become learned, not having been educated? There's the curious. You and I become water for those that are thirsting. You and I become water to those that are astonished and wanting to figure out, what is this all about? How is he doing this? Then there's the self-seeker in verse 18. The one who speaks for himself seeks his own glory. But he who is seeking the glory of the one who sent him, he is true. You see, there's plenty of self-seekers out there. But Jesus said this, the one who seeks the glory of the one who's true. See, he'll be filled. Today, just be reminded that you live in the overflow. And that's where God has called you to live, in the overflow of His goodness so that you flow to those around you and fill up their hearts. I pray that God would just bless you. And now I'm just going to ask God's blessing. Father, I thank you for what you have done and what you are doing. And Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are ministering right now to the hearts of your people to your disciples, to your worshipers, to your evangelists. And Lord, I pray that as they find themselves meditating upon you and feasting upon you, that they would just become an overflow to those around them. Lord, I thank you for your goodness now and thank you for this time. Holy Spirit, do what no man can do. Fill the heart and mind and then allow it to overflow in Jesus' name. Amen.